In order to study equilibrium quantitatively, we need to understand and use what is called the equilibrium law. We'll write a generic equilibrium equation. We'll start with a reactant which we'll call substance capital A, with its coefficient lowercase a, plus the reactant substance B with the coefficient B. These are in equilibrium with the product C with the coefficient C, plus the product D with the coefficient D. What we're doing can be used for any number of reactants and products, but we'll represent two reactants and two products here. And we'll write an expression here below the equation. In the numerator of this expression, we'll insert the concentration of product C times the concentration of product D. The coefficient C in the equation becomes the exponent for the concentration of substance C and the coefficient d becomes the exponent for the concentration of substance d. So the coefficients in the equilibrium equation become exponents in this expression. Now we'll look at the denominator of this expression. We insert the concentration of reactant A in here and multiply it by the concentration of reactant B. The coefficient A becomes the exponent of the concentration of substance A and the coefficient b becomes the exponent of the concentration of substance b. Experiments show that as long as the temperature doesn't change, the value of this expression is constant, which we'll call constant k. And because our reaction is at equilibrium, we call it k-eq. This whole expression is called the equilibrium constant expression, or simply the k-eq expression. And what we've just gone over is known as the equilibrium law. It's important to remember that in the KQ expression, the products are always on top, or in the numerator, while the reactants are always on the bottom, or in the denominator. It's also important to remember that coefficients in the equilibrium equation become exponents in the KQ expression. If a substance has a coefficient of 1, the 1 is not shown in the equilibrium equation and the exponent one is not shown in the kq expression. In addition, we must always remember that the value of kq is constant only if the temperature is constant. If we change the temperature, then the value of kq will also change. Let's do a couple of examples with real chemical reactions. The reaction of nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas to form ammonia is represented by this equilibrium equation. Let's say we're asked to write the equilibrium constant expression for this reaction. We start by writing the concentration of the product NH3 in the numerator, and its coefficient 2 becomes the exponent of NH3 in the KQ expression. Next we write the concentration of reactant N2 in the denominator. It has a coefficient of 1, so we don't include an exponent. Then we write the concentration of the reactant H2 beside the N2 in the denominator. And lastly, the coefficient 3 is written as the exponent of H2. So now we have the completed equilibrium constant expression, or KQ expression, for this reaction. Notice that in this equilibrium equation, all of the species are gases. Let's consider this reaction. Notice that in this equilibrium equation, all of the species are aqueous. Can we use these in a KQ expression? Because the concentrations of aqueous ions can change, the answer is yes. Knowing that aqueous species can be included in the KQ expression, pause the video and try writing the KQ expression for this reaction on your own, then resume the video and check your answer. In the numerator, we have the product Fe2 plus squared times the product Sn4 plus. And in the denominator, we have the reactant Fe3 plus squared times the other reactant, Sn2+. So here's the equilibrium equation with its KQ expression. At this point, we'll look at models for four different phases of matter. A gas with a subscript G, an aqueous solution with a subscript AQ, a solid with a subscript S, and a liquid with a subscript L. We'll see which of these phases can have variable concentrations. We'll start by looking at our model for a gas. 
we see that if we decrease the volume, which is the same as increasing the pressure, the gas molecules move closer together, so the concentration will increase. If we have a constant pressure, like atmospheric pressure, and we increase the temperature, the gas will expand and the concentration will decrease. We'll conclude that the concentration of a gas can be changed. Therefore, we always include gases in KQ expressions. Next, we'll look at a model for an aqueous solution. The light blue background here represents water. We're not showing individual water molecules in our model. And the charged particles are ions, which are mixed in the water and able to move freely throughout the solution. If we take a solid sample of the compound made up of these ions, and we dump it in the solution, the added solid will dissociate and the ions will spread out evenly in the solution like this. We can clearly see that the concentration of the ions is greater in the new solution. So we can conclude that the concentration of an aqueous solution can be changed. Therefore, we can include aqueous solutions in KQ expressions. Now we'll look at our model for a solid we see that the particles are arranged in a regular crystal lattice. The particles are already as tightly packed as they can be. So even if we apply pressure to a solid, it cannot be compressed. The particles are already as tightly packed as they can be. At this position in the solid, this particular volume holds six particles. If we move it to another position, the same volume also holds six particles. No matter where we move this volume, it always holds six particles. So we can say that the concentration of a solid is constant. And because a solid can't be compressed, its concentration cannot be changed. If we look at our model for a liquid, the particles are not in a regular crystal lattice, but they're still packed very tightly. And even if we apply pressure to a liquid, the amount that we could compress it is negligible. So we see that the concentration of a liquid is also constant and cannot be changed. We can summarize by stating that the concentrations of both solids and liquids are constant, while the concentrations of both gases and aqueous solutions can be changed. When solid calcium carbonate, CaCl3 solid, is heated in a closed container, it decomposes into solid calcium oxide, CaO solid, and carbon dioxide gas. Try writing the KQ expression for this reaction. You might have started this by writing the product concentrations on top and the reactant concentration on the bottom. We know from the equilibrium law that this K is a constant. However, at this point, instead of calling it KQ, we're going to call it K1. Notice that CaO and CaCO3 are both solids. And remember from our previous discussion that the concentrations of solids are constant. Because the concentrations of CaO and CaCO3 are both constant, we can replace them in this expression with symbols for constants. We'll replace the concentration of CaO with the constant symbol K2. And we'll replace the concentration of CaCO3 by the constant symbol K3. So the expression now reads K1 equals K2 times the concentration of CO2 over K3. We'll rearrange the equation by moving K2 to the denominator on the left side. And moving K3 to the numerator on the left side. This gives us the equation K1 times K3 over K2 equals the concentration of CO2. Looking on the left side, we can reason that a constant times a constant divided by another constant must itself be a constant. What chemists have decided to do is call this combined constant on the left KQ, the equilibrium constant. So the equation now becomes KQ equals the concentration of CO2. The final result is that we could have obtained this equation simply by writing the KQ expression for this reaction, but leaving out any solids. Just remember that CaCO3 and CaO are left out of the KQ expression 
because their concentrations are constant. Recall that concentrations of both solids and pure liquids are always constant. Therefore, when writing KQ expressions for reactions, always leave out any solids or liquids that were in the equation. This is because their concentrations are constant and they are incorporated into the equilibrium constant KQ. Pause the video and try writing the KQ expression for this reaction. Then resume the video to check your answer. Notice that the copper metal and gold metal are both solids in this equation. Therefore, we simply leave the concentrations of both of these out of the KQ expression. The numerator in the KQ expression is the concentration of the product Cu2 plus cubed. And the denominator is the concentration of the reactant Au3 plus squared. So this is the KQ expression for this reaction. Because the copper metal and gold metal were both solids, they're simply left out of the KQ expression. Let's try one more example. We're asked to write the KQ expression for aqueous ethanol forming pure liquid ethanol. Again, pause the video, try this on your own, then resume the video to check your answer. Because the product CH3CH2OH liquid is a liquid, we do not include its concentration in the KQ expression. But CH3CH2OH liquid is the only product, and it's eliminated. So what do we put in the numerator of the KQ expression? The answer is just a 1. Whenever there are no concentrations that we can use from the products, we always just put a 1 in the numerator of the KQ expression. On the reactant side, we have CH3CH2OH aqueous, which is allowed in the KQ expression. So we put the concentration of CH3CH2OH into the denominator of our expression. So the KQ expression for this reaction is KQ equals 1 over the concentration of aqueous CH3CH2OH. Often we don't need to include phase subscripts with the concentrations in the KQ expression. However, we'll include it here because the compound is the same on the right side of the equation as on the left. The only difference is the one on the left is aqueous while the one on the right is a pure liquid.